I'm Eric Mittenthal with the American Meat Institute, sharing my meat with the world, and you're listening to Dave's Gone By with Dave Lefkowitz and Rabbi Saul Solomon on UNC Radio. Everybody, welcome, shalom, this is Rabbi Saul Solomon of Temple, Sons of Bitches in Great Neck, New York, and let me tell you, baseball has begun, it is that time of the year, and when I think of baseball, I think of big, long things, not bats, and not uh, whatever disgusting thing you have in your heads. No, I'm thinking of hot dogs, the great American food. Frankfurter's hot dog. Well, nothing really American about Frankfurter, the name. But we'll ask about this because we have with us in the neighborhood on the phone the vice president of public affairs at the American Meat Institute. This is a man who knows his meat. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm oh, I'm going to hold it together. I promise uh, the guy. I promised God that I would hold it together in this interview. Please welcome Eric Mittenthal. Shalom, Eric. Shalom. So glad to join you. Yes, yes. So, how long? Now, now, what, what interests me is that you haven't always been a meat person. You, you used to be a TV news reporter. Is that true? I did used to be a TV news reporter, but at the same time, I ate so much meat. <laughs> and, and you were not a gay man. We're talking actual cows and pigs and, and chickens. And, Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. Just I'm just checking. That's all I'm asking. So, but but really, how did you go from reporting on crime and hurricanes and oh, there's a fire down the block. We better have that on TV because fire always looks good on the news. To firing up a grill. <laughs> Well, uh, TV news doesn't exactly pay the bills, so I uh, needed to find something, something different, and the meat industry pays the bills, so uh, I made a switch, and I uh, get to talk about hot dogs and sausage now. Now, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, again, I'm sorry for backtracking, but you were an on-camera television reporter. Is this true? This is true. And this did not... What bills do you... What are you, buying Mercedes? I'm buying meat. <laughs> they, uh, it, 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 it's not as a, it's not as glamorous as it, as it looks to be. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very tough business, the TV business. I guess it must. I mean, but it was a full time gig with ben, I, I assume with benefits and stuff. I mean, if you're on TV and you're not paying your bills, that just uh, that astonishes me. You know? No, it's it's uh, it's tough. They, they, that's one of the hidden secrets of the, the TV business. They don't pay you a whole lot, especially if you're not a uh, main anchor. Right, so if you're just out in the field at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning chasing something down, this they don't pay you for. Right. That's amazing. That's, uh, not, not much. But you went from the reporting into marketing. Was that an easy uh, transition? Yeah, you know, uh, we, we, we both uh, talk and, uh, and, and communicate and, and tell the story of, of what we're trying to tell. And so I went from uh, telling random stories in, in different cities to uh, tell them the story of, of meat and hot dogs and sausage. All right. Well, what is the story that you generally tell? I mean, what, what do you tell people about meat? Well, uh, meat's delicious, first of all. Well, you, I can uh, do that. I should have your job. Hey, everybody, meat is tasty. I love meat. Okay, good. Give me, give right. me your job. No, tell me more. You know, meat, meat is a cultural phenomenon that brings us together. You know, everybody loves getting together, whether it's at a barbecue or, you know, at their backyard grills, you know, at restaurants. They love to eat meat, hot dogs, sausage, steaks, bacon. Um, you know, it's, a, uh, it's, it's an American favorite. And so uh, my job is to, uh, to make sure that we're, we're telling the, the great stories of meat and uh, particularly these days hot dogs and sausages. You know, hot dogs and sausages are... Uh, despite their foreign origins, the quintessential American food these days. Now, let me ask you, what is the difference? I have wondered about this. Is there a technical difference between a hot dog, a frankfurter, and a sausage? What is it? There, there is a little bit of a difference. It's mostly in uh, the way the meat is ground and the seasonings that are used. Um, you know, certain seasonings are typically used in hot dogs versus sausages, and um, that's kind of where the distinctive uh, differences come in. So do some places use them interchangeably? Or, do, or, or is a hot dog a real American sort of Frankfurter thing that we know? Well, the hot dog originally started in, in Frankfurt, Germany, believe it or not. And, uh, well, it's a Frankfurter, it's become, it should. It's yeah. kind of Americanized. It's, 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 it's become kind of a, the American food because, uh, you know, Americans have made it their own in terms of uh, 
putting different things on it, and um, you know, of course, eating it at baseball games. And so, uh, it's it, it's it's the American food now more than it than it is the European food. Why do you think that took off um, so well in baseball games, as opposed to, let's say, hamburger or sushi or uh, you know, noodles? Why the hot dog? Well, hamburger you have to eat with two hands. Mm -hmm. Sushi you have to eat with chopsticks, and certainly that's not easy at, at a baseball game. Noodles you have to eat with chopsticks or a fork. Hot dog you hold it in one hand, you take a few bites, and you've you've got it down, and uh, you have a hand free to uh, to go for the foul balls as well. Uh, I still think it would be great to have barbecue ribs in in the games. Just have everybody get all sloppy and greasy in the catching them. Man, this way no one could catch a, a baseball. Because all the kids, the ball would go flying into the stands. Everybody's hands would be covered with barbecue sauce and grease. It would fall on the floor, and a little child would get it. I think that would solve a lot of problems. We would not have that, uh, what was it, the Bill Buckner incident? No, no, that was the man. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. But, but let me ask you, Eric Mittenthal, of the American Meat Institute, what are some of the, the more eccentric, unusual things that you have heard people put on their frankfurters, on their hot dogs? Well, there's a lot of different things, especially at baseball games uh, these days that the teams are, uh, are breaking out for, for their hot dogs. Uh, there's a crab mac and cheese dog in, in, uh, in Baltimore. Yes. And so uh, that's, that's the ultimate non-kosher dog, but, uh, but uh, no shit. The crab yeah. on there with Old Bay seasoning and mac and cheese as well. It's one of the more unusual ones. In Pittsburgh, they're putting, putting pierogies on hot dogs, which uh, is a good, good a good true Polish tradition. Wait a minute, a pierogi is a little dumpling, right? A, a, a potato dumpling? That is correct. So they put the... How do they fit this on a hot dog? <laughs> I think they use mini pierogies, but uh, they're able to fit them on there. I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering. And then, of course, there's corn dogs. That's a tradition in, in world fairs and, and county fairs and uh, places like that. What's the... Um... I'm fans of, of meat on a stick. Meat on a stick is a, a, a good trend. Now... What is your favorite way to eat a hot dog? Well, I'm a southern guy. I'm from Atlanta, and so uh, I like a good, I like a, a hot dog from the varsity down there. Uh, a good chili dog with onions and uh, and mustard is perfect to me. Sounds sounds pretty good. Now, now let me ask you: if, if people were to say, "Okay, what goes into your average hot dog of a, of a, of a decent variety, of a trustworthy brand? How much of, is meat?" And how much is stuff, and how much is stuff that you really don't want to know? 100% <laughs> is meat, and 0% is stuff you don't want to know. That's a, uh, a common misconception out there. And you know, the old saying goes, there are two things you never want to see being made, and that's laws and sausages. And living in D.C., I can vouch for the law part. Uh, I, I don't want to see how those are being made. But the sausages uh, are different. It's, it's a very... Um, it's, it's a pretty straightforward process. They're taking uh, similar cuts to meat, cuts of meat uh, that are that are steaks. I mean, they're taking uh, pieces off those, uh, similar to what they would do for ground beef, uh, and then they uh, blend it together a little bit more fine than you would have in ground beef. They add in different seasonings, uh, put it in the casing, and that's a hot dog. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, well, it wouldn't necessarily be all beef unless it said all beef. They're, they will also use uh, pork. Yeah, I mean, he, 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 you know, but it's the same idea with pork as well. It's, it's the different pieces off of, uh, off of you know, common pork cuts, and, uh, and that's what would go into a pork dog. But the, or a mixture of pork and beef. It's the old, always on the yeah. label. That's one thing. It's always on the label. So if you're, you're getting a uh, pork and beef dog, you would have, you'd have both of those on the label. If you're getting a turkey dog, uh, same idea. But the, the thing, the old joke is, though, that, say, it is a pork dog, as it were, that they use everything but the oink. You know, it's like... Yes, that's, that's the old thing. But that's, that's no longer the case. It used to be. So, so the FDA stepped in, or how did it change from, you didn't know what was in, you know, from sawdust to, to anything, to being a trustworthy, meat-worthy frankfurter? Well, it's... It, it's one of those things where I think you know people people had this impression of everything but the oink, and, and they were turned off by it. And so uh, you know companies uh, do everything they can to meet consumer demand. And if consumer demand says we don't want uh, you know everything but the oink, they're going to make sure that it's that it's uh, you know uh, meat that they're used to. Now, how do you reconcile as a person who represents 
meat in general in America, reconcile that you have different brands that you particularly like and maybe not like. I mean, maybe you prefer, you know, Nathan's or Hebrew National or something. How do you make everybody happy? Well, we don't, uh, you yeah, know, certainly we, we, we work with certain brands, but uh, our job is not to necessarily promote uh, a brand. They have marketing departments for that. We, we promote the products, so uh, we want to talk about hot dogs and sausage and meat, and, uh, and we're, we're talking more generally about the category as opposed to brands. And uh, we recognize that everybody has their individual favorites. Uh, certainly I do, and I'm sure you do too. And uh, Hebrew National! He's recognized it as well. Isaac Gellis! Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Is, is there a big difference between kosher hot dogs, God bless them, and your basic garden variety Goyesha hot dogs? Uh, the primary difference is uh, kosher hot dogs are all beef. Uh, Non-kosher hot dogs you know, tend to uh, have pork. Doesn't necessarily they they uh, they do, but um, you know kosher hot dogs would be made from all beef uh, or poultry, and uh, they've been slaughtered. Uh, the meat has been slaughtered according to Jewish law. Um, you know, but they all contain high quality cuts of meat. One, one, one assumes, one hopes. Now, now let me also ask you about the the uh, the names for these things. I mean, okay, Frankfurter, because they uh, created the thing in Frankfurt, Germany. How did hot dog become hot dog? That's that's uh, a great mystery. One of the uh, one of the the stories around that has to do with baseball, actually. Uh, the the story goes that um, a, the vendors were selling hot dogs uh, and they were saying calling them uh, your red hot dogs and sausages and a reporter at the baseball game heard it did not know how to spell dachshund so he called them hot dogs uh, and that's that's one of the stories about how the uh, the hot dog first came about. But also then you have the term wieners so. We now think of them uh, with wiener dogs, but in that case, I think the, the dachshund is named after the frankfurter rather the, than the other way around. Or is it because it's Vienna sausage? Where, did, where does wiener come from? I think it's probably very similar. Uh, the, you know, a, a dachshund is kind of known as a wiener dog, so uh, same idea. No, no, but again, is it the dachshund because it might have come from Vienna, Austria? Or is the dachshund named after the hot dog wiener? In, that, in which case, the wiener is already named... The dog. I think the dachshund came first. Okay, well, so, yes, yeah, so, all right. It's a tautological argument, perhaps. <laughs> My brain is smoking at the moment. We're talking, speaking of smoked things and smoked meats, with Eric Mittenthal, vice president of the of public affairs at the American Meat Institute. Another question, though. How do you, not just with hot dogs, but how do you counter the idea that meat in general, especially red meat, is not good for you. How do you what do you say back to people who who give legitimate arguments that say we really shouldn't be eating much meat? Well, that's another uh, common myth that's out there. Uh, we actually have a very good website called MeatMythCrushers.com that uh, takes on a lot of these uh, a lot of these myths, including the uh, the hot dogs and sausage, and that meat's not good for you. Uh, you know, these days. People are people are looking for food that has a high in protein. Uh, there's no better food that has, that brings you protein than meat, and so uh, you know, protein is is great for satiety. Uh, it, satiety it, meaning fuller, you, you, you feel full. Satiety mean yep, the fuller you feel, it right. helps you feel full. The fuller you feel, the less you're going to eat, and so uh, you know, meat can contribute to uh, to a healthy diet in that way, and. Uh, certainly, there are lots of uh, lean cuts of meat that do not uh, do not provide uh, a significant amount of fat in there. Uh, certainly, people uh, are, are worried about uh, the amount of fat, and um, you know there are there are plenty of cuts out there that are, that are low fat and uh, and very healthy for you. Well, I think also people with hot dogs specifically are worried about nitrates and things like that. I mean, has that been finessed or removed, or do you just say? Don't eat hot dogs ten times a day every day, and you'll be fine. <laughs> well, nitrates actually a really interesting, uh, really interesting topic. Uh, you, you may not know this, but uh, you get far more nitrate from your diet from vegetables than you ever would from a hot dog. And so, uh, you know, hot dogs do contain nitrate as part of the the curing process, and um, all cured meats would would contain that. Uh, but there have been a lot of studies that show that nitrate uh, has, has health benefits as opposed to uh, as opposed to being uh, a health hazard. So, um, what benefits 
do you get from a nitrate? What's that? What benefit do you get from eating a nitrate? Oh, you're getting a little, a little past my expertise okay. on that. <laughs> All right, I'm just wondering. Uh, I mean, does it make you a better lover it, or something like that or what? You hope. It, well, yes. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that, that contributes to, uh, to, to, healthy, to healthy cells and to healthy function. Um, and so it, it's, it's a lot of ongoing research uh, around that area right now uh, determining uh, exactly what are the, the health benefits of nitrate. And, uh, and let me also ask you, though, what, okay, we, we've countered the people who say that you shouldn't eat much meat. And the, what do you say to, I guess, the, the enemy, as it were, vegans and vegetarians? To try to, to win them over, or is it sort of like uh, Democrats trying to win the Tea Party over? It's hopeless. Well, we're believers in choice. Uh, you know, if people, if people uh, choose to not eat meat, that's their choice. Uh, you know, they're certainly in the minority, and I uh, can't I can't relate to them. Uh, but you know, that's their choice, uh, and I think we have the choice in this country to uh, eat lots of meat too. And a lot of people like to do that as well. And so, you know, our job is to uh, promote the benefits of meat to people and, and help them understand that you know meat is a, a delicious, healthy thing for them to be, for, to be a part of their diets. Well, let, let me ask, how often, Eric Mittenthal, do you eat meat over the course of a week? Well, I, I, I eat meat with pretty much every meal. Uh, Get involved. Much at breakfast, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a, a bagel guy at breakfast, so uh, sometimes maybe a bagel sandwich with, with some sausage on there, but... Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sandwich guy for lunch, so I'll, I'll go get uh, a sandwich or a hot dog or a hamburger or something like that for, for lunch, and then, uh, you know, give me a piece of steak for dinner. I'm, I'm, I'm set. I'm, now, as much as I am like you and agree with you, do you, how's your health? How's your blood pressure? Are you overweight? I mean, I, I don't have you in front of me. I'm wondering, how are you? Well, I'm I'm in great shape. I'm uh, I'm six foot five, so oh, I didn't, no wonder. didn't have any have any growth problems, and uh, you know I'm six five, about 195 pounds, so uh, I think I'm doing pretty well. And you must also, with all the the meal stuff, do you get to try a lot of different? I mean, are people constantly bringing you new meats to try and new cured things? Not as much new, but we get to try a lot of different brands, products, uh, in terms of, of their offerings and, uh, and different sausages and things like that. Yeah, we, we, we definitely get to, uh, to, to eat well here at the uh, American Institute. Well, let me ask you about, um, I'm, I'm not talking about endangered species, but some of the, the meats that would not be as common. I mean, we talk uh, poultry and, and uh, steak and all that and, and pigs, but have you tried and what do you think of some of the more unusual things that they make, you know, steaks out of? In terms of, uh, In terms of well, <laughs> some, zebra. Yeah, some of the more the, the unique things out there these days, you know, yeah. I think that once again goes back to choice. Um, you know, no, but I'm asking so your, the, your particular, uh, so have, have you tried like... My particular? Yeah. Have you tried... I've had buffalo. Uh, buffalo is about the extent of, of what I've gone. I've, I've tried, uh, I've tried elk before, um... I think that's pretty much the extent of. Uh, I don't. Re- I don't really like it when it's when it's really gamey. So I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm not an exotic meat guy. Okay, just just because we there is actually in uh, Colorado there's a a sausage place out here that uh, takes great pride in the fact that they make their sausages with these kind of all different elky things and buffalo things and and stuff like that and, and stuff you're like oh my goodness I've never tried that before but the problem is when it's in a sausage there's so much spice on it you're not really tasting whatever the hell you're eating it's just you know sausage so yeah yeah no, I, I wouldn't be afraid to try it to try any of it but uh, you know sometimes it's not as, as tasty as some of the the, nor- the more mainstream uh, items now are you also involved in po- poultry at the Meat Institute or is that something else entirely we do uh, we do turkey uh, there's a separate chicken council that uh, they handle there's a chicken council that's wonderful yeah so, so but Those you know for everything well, when you think about chickens and cows, the other um, charge that has been leveled at the industry is cruelty to animals and the way that they're kept and fed and bred and basically penned in their entire lives, fattened up and then slaughtered. I mean, have you guys responded to this idea that meat is murder? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we actually uh, developed several years ago uh, an animal, animal welfare audit. Uh, all of our companies uh, uh, utilize it to, uh, to evaluate their systems to make sure that they are uh, treating animals uh, treating animals well. And uh, the audit was designed by uh, Temple Grandin, who is actually uh, hopefully familiar to, uh, to folks there in Colorado. She's a, you know, a professor at Colorado State University, one of the uh, most world, world-renowned uh, animal welfare experts. Oh, right. I've heard that name. Yes, honestly. And not just because I always go to Temple. Yes. There's a joke there. Okay, thank you. So, so good. So there are these these things. Are things changing though? Because you do see the way slaughterhouses are depicted in documentaries, and the way the, the chickens can't move, and the razor wire, and all these horrible. I mean, has there been movement forward over the past ten years? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we we definitely, um, you know, since we've developed the audit, you know, there's been a, a lot of improvement in the way. Uh, animals are cared for, and uh, certainly a lot of the videos that you see online uh, from the animal activists are showing you a certain perspective um, that isn't necessarily uh, how how plants are run. And so um, we've actually created uh, a video of uh, of a beef plant to show exactly how animals are slaughtered at a beef plant, and uh, that's available on our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube.com/slash Meat News Network. So when people are curious about how these things happen. Um, and you know how animals are treated. We we are actually able to show it. Well, have, have you moved closer and closer to uh, the kosher style of killing, which us Jews are very proud of? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, kosher kosher is one way uh, to do it, and, and it involves uh, a rabbi being present for the process. Um, you know, it, it just depends on uh, on whether a plant's trying to, uh, to to keep their food kosher or not. Well, it's, it's more than the, the rabbi. It's also about the way, the quickness with which the the slicing and the whatevering is done. I'm assuming, right? Right. right. I mean, yeah, just, it's, just, it's, yeah. it's the way that the animal is, is actually slaughtered. You know, I mean, sometimes they put him in, a, in an electric chair. They read him a story first. It's very, you know, they're trying to be more humane about it. I'm kidding. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, not gonna laugh there. One, one, one more question uh, or two for Eric Mittenthal of the American Meat Institute. What's the latest news? Whatever happened to Mad Cow? Well, Mad Cow uh, is is uh, hasn't been an issue here in the U.S. It's uh, you know we've taken a lot of steps to uh, to ensure that. Uh, that is not a, an issue here, and so um, we haven't seen, um, you know, any any typical cases of. Uh, there, there was one atypical strain uh, that popped up last year uh, that that researchers believe was um, was anomaly, an, an anomaly that just kind of popped up, um, but it's it has not been a significant issue in the U.S. Um, and, and, and you're not. Certainly, you guys don't deal with the international. You you are just basically concerned with American beef and America. Well, it is the American Meat Cow Institute, so there you go, I guess. So, so Mad and Cow... We, and we certainly work with international trade and, uh, and you know, are, are uh, you know, monitoring developments internationally. And, um, you know, in certain parts of the world, it's still, uh, it's still somewhat of a concern. We do not currently import beef from Europe uh, because of concerns over um, BSC or, or Mad Cow disease. And so, um, you know, but that's something that, that our government monitors very closely and So, so, but it's good that we don't have to worry about mad cow because I've seen some pretty angry sheep, which is uh, that's right. There you go. Oh, good! I gotta laugh. That's exciting. So, so, last question for Eric Megenthal, and you've been a very good sport. I, I will say, um, what what are some ideas, specific ones in ads or marketing or promos that you guys have used that you've come up with either in commercials or what have you to to say how wonderful meat is. We actually aren't the ones who do the marketing. Uh, there are specific, uh, the, the farmers come together to, to market uh, their specific commodities. So you have uh, a beef group and a pork group and a, uh, and a dairy group there is too. And so uh, their job is to market. Our, our job is to, uh, is to just uh, tell, the, tell the story and uh, make sure people uh, understand what, what meat is and uh, what hot dogs and sausage are. Oh, let me, is there a bipod? Byproducts group. I'm always kind of curious about what the hell meat byproducts are and what 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 are those and where do they go? Uh, that's a good question. I don't I don't think there is a byproducts group, although there is a group for everything. So 
or it might be. It might be. Maybe it goes to China, you know. So I'm going to ask you what is the, I, I know I keep tacking on one extra question, but I keep thinking of these these things. What is the so terrible about horse meat? Anytime you watch a thing, is oh, they were using horse meat instead of that. I mean, it's cheaper, I guess. But what's so wrong with using horse meat? Well, horse meat uh, is, um, it, it's, it's, it, in the U.S., it is seen as, you know, horses are seen as uh, pets and uh, friendly animals, and so they are not seen as food here. But uh, in three quarters of the world, uh, horses are seen as uh, a food animal. And so um, for those places where it's culturally acceptable, there's absolutely nothing wrong with horse meat. Um, you know, they, they have uh, their own standards for, for slaughter, and uh, in the U.S. there's just not a demand for it. And so, uh, you know, people don't want it here, and so we don't have horse meat here. And, and not to be cliche, but also in the the Asian markets, the the stereotype is that somewhere in there there's dogs and cats. I, I mean, yeah, no, that is that is uh, a common uh, stereotype, and you know, in different parts of the world, you know, people eat different parts of the animal, um, and that's just how how their culture uh, you know handles eating animals, and our culture is a little different. Well, all I can say is when it comes to eating horse, just say nay. I'm sorry. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with the delightful Eric Mittenfall of the American Meat Institute. You had mentioned the website before that had myths about the meat and that, that people can check. Well, what's, what is that site again? It's meatmythcrushers.com. Meat Myth Crusher. So if you want your meat crushed, this is the, well, your, your meat, meat, I don't know what I'm saying. Anywho, Mr. Mittenthal, it has been really a pleasure to talk to you, and I thank you so much for bringing your meat into our lives.